Sound, sound, sound. <clears throat> so we've talked in detail. So you've heard of both electrical gradients and chemical gradients. We need to talk about how they combine as one factor in situations where we're talking about ions, which is what we're talking about when we talk about excitable cells. So neurons primarily, but also muscle cells. So I'm gonna draw both of these separately in a moment. First, let's just have a reminder here of our typical cell um, and it's negative inside compared to outside. And that is because of the presence of sodium and potassium. Um, so high sodium outside and low sodium inside. And let's actually just do that one. So sodium is a charged ion. In this scenario of the cell, just looking at sodium, there is a concentration gradient in. So remember a concentration gradient is when there's more of something on one side of the membrane compared to the other side. Could be either inside or outside. For sodium in our cells, it is more outside. In that case, that creates a drive in. So the gradient is this way, is into the cell. That is a chemical drive or gradient. And the concentration piece of that is when there's more of something, anything on one side versus the other. The electrical component is when there is a difference in charge. So that is here. If we have more negative inside the cell, which we do in reality, and more positive outside the cell, There's a drive for positive to move in. That is the electrical drive. So that in this scenario, same, it's in. Could potentially be out if we're talking about um, movement of a negative ion, for example. So actually this is the electrical drive for a positive ion, anything positive. But if we're talking about the movement of a negative thing, so chloride, for example, um, just talking about electrical, a negative ion is going to have a drive out. So this is the electrical drive for a positive ion. So in our resting cell, in any cell, we are talking about ions, the presence of ions inside and outside, the movement of ions in different times of the action potential, which we'll get to, we need to talk about not the electrical gradient, not the chemical gradient, but the electrochemical gradient, which is going to consider each of these components. Sometimes those, this is easy to determine because the electrical and the chemical gradient are in the same direction. So for sodium, in this case, the electrical chemical gradient is simple to determine. It is the same direction for both. There are other times when the electrical and the chemical gradients act in opposition. Um, and there are formulas you can use to calculate the specifics of driving forces in for different ions and different scenarios is called the Nernst equation. We will not be doing that. I will be telling you um, for potassium is the one we'll look at where that, what the factors that contribute to that gradient and where those are equal and opposite gradients and when they're not. So we'll get there in just a moment here to potassium. Let's do a few practice, and then I have a learning checks you're gonna do on your own. So for each of these, um, we're gonna be looking at the electrical, then chemical, then electrochemical gradients, and then saying whether this ion will move in or out. 
for this question, we're going to be assuming we, it's on the membranes permeable, assume permeability. This lecture is not on permeability of membranes, it's on gradients. Um, so when is there a drive? Those are two separate things, whether a membrane is permeable to an ion and whether there is a drive for that ion. They both matter, but they're two separate factors. This lecture is on gradients or drive. So we're going to assume permeability. So scenario here, we've got plus 50 inside the cell. Remember, that's always compared to outside the cell. So outside is zero, always compared to inside. So for um, sodium, what we're talking about here, so the drive for sodium, it's different for a different ion, um, is going to be out because sodium is positive. It's going to move away from where it's more positive. Out is the electrical drive. We were to draw those charges along here, we draw them like this. The chemical drive is none. So this is a measure of concentration, right? Millivolts equal inside and outside the cell. So in this scenario, the electrochemical gradient is out. It is just due to that electrical gradient. It's going to be a drive out. So sodium will move out. Easy, right? Here is potassium a scenario where there is zero millivolts inside the cell, right? So a hypothetical situation um, it does happen for a moment in, in your cells during the action potential, but these scenarios are all hypothetical, just looking at how these different situations affect drive. There is no electrical gradient, zero in, zero out, zero inside compared to outside. This is again, potassium we're talking about in this situation. The chemical gradient is, so there's more inside compared to outside. So the drive is out. It's going to move this way due to its chemical gradient. So it's going to move, I just said this, out because of that chemical gradient, which then determines the electrochemical gradient. So these two scenarios so far have been where the electrical or chemical gradient is, is non-existent. You also could have one where there are both. So actually, let me do that one time here, clear these and make this into um, sorry, I gotta think a moment. <laughs> minus plus plus 70 millivolts. If we do that, potassium still moves out but it's going to be due to also an electrical gradient. Potassium is going to move away from the positive towards a more negative. So out, 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 out. The only change is there's also an electrical gradient. Sometimes, however, the electrical and chemical gradients act in opposition. So one might be in and one might be out. And again, we're not going to go through all the scenarios of calculating this. So in this case, negative inside compared to outside. So potassium, there's a drive for it in, potassium, in. Chemical, still just like the previous slide, the drive out down its concentration gradient. So what, like, how do we know which one's bigger? Well, because I'm gonna tell you, for potassium, minus 90 millivolts is the, what's called the equilibrium potential. This is where the two are going to be equal. So the electrical and chemical gradients. Because that's minus 90, that's pretty negative. That is more negative than our cells typically are. The concentration gradient is going to override the electrical gradient, counteract it, but the chemical gradient will be the factor that contributes more, meaning the electrochemical gradient is still out. So if we did this in, oops, get rid of that, out. Um, this size is like big. This is a fairly large drive. Out compared to the drive in is smaller. And again, there's a calculation you can do with the Nernst equation to actually figure that out. What that means is if you can consider both of these together, 
So this is electrical, this is chemical. The electrochemical gradient is still out. It's smaller than that, um, but it is still out. As potassium moves out, it becomes more negative inside, decreasing the drive, but it's gonna keep moving out until when? Until the inside of the cell gets to be minus 90. At minus 90, the drives out and in are equal. And in opposition, of course. So at minus 90, there's no movement of potassium. That's the only one that will be helpful to know is potassium. It's there's electro um, equilibrium potentials, and this is not spelled right at all. Um, for every ion, potassium will be the one that matters for our, our situation. Okay, three learning checks, one for sodium's movement, another one for potassium, and then a third one, this is number three, for potassium as well.